So the last thing I want to talk about today is the concept of forward iterators. And basically, what is a forward iterator? A forward iterator is the combination of the characteristics of an input iterator with the characteristics of an output iterator. So if you think about it sort of from an inheritance point of view, forward inherits the properties of input and output iterators, plus they also give a little bit other, a couple other things. The main difference between the forward iterator and the other iterators are that you can use the forward iterators on both sides of the assignment statement, whereas an output iterator can only be used on the left-hand side and an input iterator can only be used on the right-hand side. So that, that's what makes it a forward iterator. You can go through and put it either place. And we'll take a look in a, in a second about where that gets used. So let's go ahead and take a look at the example of this, which you can find in my GitHub repository at this link. So here we are in my interactive development environment. I'm gonna show you how to use forward iterators. As I talked about before, they basically combine the best of both worlds of input and output iterators. So you can construct them, assign them. You can check for equality and inequality. And then you can use the dereference operation on either side of the assignment statement. That's the main difference between input or output iterators. They can only do one. Four iterators can do both. And then, of course, they also define pre and post increment. So you can either have them be const or mutable. We'll take a look at examples that illustrate this. And a good example, probably the best example of four iterators, is the replace algorithm, which is the way of being able to check for a current value in a range and then replacing it if you find it. So we're going to look at two examples here. The first one's going to use built-in arrays. So we have a built-in array with these values. We're going to print the contents of the built-in array. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to find all the cases where the built-in array contained the value 10 and we're going to replace it with the value 42. So if you come over here and look at replace, you can see all replace does is it marches through the range from beginning to end. It uses the, the reference operation on the left-hand side of the equality statement in order to check to see whether the old value equals the new value. That's not an assignment, so that's not really a, it's, not, it's, a, it's still an R value use. It's the right-hand side use. It's not assigning, it's reading. But then if there is a match, then we go ahead and assign to the forward iterator by using it as an L value. So this time it's gonna do the assignment that's gonna allow us to, to change its value. So that's what replace looks like. And you can see what we're gonna do here. We're just gonna replace all, con all values of 10 with the value 42 and then print the results. Let's show the same algorithm, the same behavior, except this time we're gonna replace our built-in array with a vector, same values, basically the same code. We're gonna call replace. Except this time we're going to say v dot begin v dot end as opposed to saying begin a end a but boy those things are similar and then down here we're going to go ahead and print the results so let's go ahead and compile this and see what it looks like and as you might expect we're going to start out with the initial values we're going to replace all tens with 42 in our array and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with our vector. And surprise, surprise, or no, no surprise, surprise, we end up with exactly the same results because these algorithms are agnostic as to whether they work on built-in arrays or various types of containers, either STL predefined containers or user-defined containers. So that's the replace operation.